This is China's National Center for Performing Arts. It's a terrific design. It reminds me of the Sydney Opera House. It stages different performances like symphonies, ballet, operas, Peking opera, and Hongmei opera. All of these are staged every day. But today I'm going to be talking about China's anti-corruption. The part I'm interested in the most is that the National Supervisory Commission will be constitutionalized to be a new state organization, which means China's anti-graft is further institutionalized. As Kevin Rudd, the former Prime Minister of Australia said, it's not just a one-off where there is a massive anti-corruption campaign. What they're seeking to do is to entrench the anti-corruption machinery into the normal workings of the Chinese state and party. In this regard, the first thing, his commitment and his uh, 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 leading uh, approach is focusing on the internal party situation to strengthen the internal uh, party uh, position to clean up the party and uh, to make it competent enough to address the, the whole transformation with the vanguard party leadership. In it. Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new area will also appear in the amendment to the constitution. The Communist Party of China determines to enshrine into constitution the significant theoretical, practical and institutional explorations achieved from practice over the last five years. I think the, the CPC is a, is a, uh, is a learning organisation and it learns constantly from what has happened before. From the practical things that it does, it then refines that and, and creates even a, an even better uh, future. Written in both Chinese and English, the popular title, China One, appeared on the cover of Time magazine in its November 13th, 2017 issue. To answer the question, why China One, the author Ian Bremmer says it was a wide-ranging anti-corruption campaign that helped China to win. After all, more and more political parties from around the world want to learn from the successes of the CPC. A wish that we all want for our own country so that we have a coherent political and decision-making system uh, that is quick, uh, that is able to make decisions rapidly, but decisions that are properly considered, evidence-based and researched, uh, so that uh, you really impact on the lives of ordinary people. Uh, that's who uh, many of us are in government for, so to speak, to try and achieve those kind of results that we can only admire from what the CPC has done in China. Compared with the universal democracy of the electorate, some scholars have turned to study the virtuous politics in China. They say that it is time for the one-person, one-vote election to step down from its altar. China's virtuous political system is more suitable to China than the one-person, one-vote system of the West. David A. Bell is a respected scholar. His book, A China Model, widely makes this view known. What are the advantages that all the leaders have political experience before they reach the high levels of government? The leaders can take long-term decisions, you know, five years, ten years, and we expect they're going to stick to those. I'm here at the National Museum of China. This building not only houses the grand history of China, but also the history of constant foreign aggression in the past hundred years. It was right here that President Xi Jinping proposed the China Dream to achieve the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation which he calls as the true aspiration of the party members. Perhaps only when we understand the original aspiration can we really understand Xi Jinping and the Communist Party of China. <laughs>